Eric Darling here. Guess what? Ah, Darling Data, baby. <clears throat> oh, we're 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 back at it. Ooh, I'm afraid I'm afraid to do anything too uh, too interesting with my fingers, lest I be accused of gang membership. Uh, I'm, I'm not in the gang. Um, no no one has ever liked me enough to ask me to join a gang. Um, I've been hired at a few companies. But, um, <laughs> gang membership is apparently. Uh, apparently, I'm not qualified. I don't know. I don't know what I did wrong. I got the hand and neck tattoos. I'm like, you know, some, sort of, a, sort of a thick dude. Um, you know, I feel like I've done a lot right to get in the gang. Just apparently, I don't. I don't know what part of the screening process I fail out at. I don't know. I don't know where. I don't know where I lose. I don't know where I lose in that the interview process. But here we are, <clears throat> gangless. <laughs> uh, in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about index compression. The reason I want to talk about index compression is because I hardly see anyone using it. It's been around forever. Even, even 2016 SP1 made it available to lowly standard edition users. And standard edition users are the people who need index compression the most because you are limited to a 128 gigabyte buffer pool on standard edition. If you have very, very large databases and tables and, and you have currently way more data than memory, Compressing your indexes can help even those numbers out a little bit, can help get you back to a, a much... When I talk about index stuff, um, the amount of data you have and the amount of memory you have, those numbers, is, is for most workloads that I see, often need to be a lot closer than they currently are. In standard edition, you have this artificial cap. Microsoft just like hand gestures. <laughs> Certain fingers come into play. Uh, that, that, that denote a lack of respect for, uh, for standard edition users. In Italy, it might be a gesture that involves a, a, a hand uh, coming from the chin and a, certain, and a certain gesticulation. So you should use it. Um, you know, a lot of the, oh no, this is some CPU overhead fears about index compression uh, can get, can get a, a, a number of disrespectful hand gestures for me because... Um, most workloads that I see are horribly, dismally, terribly I/O bound. They, they, like, there's just page I/O latch SH weights going out the door. Uh, you can't keep enough stuff in the buffer pool. There are giant memory grants bonking stuff out of the buffer pool, and you just go to disk, go to disk, go to disk, and disk sucks. Going to disk in a database workload is a sign that your database workload it will perpetually be slow. Uh, it doesn't, I don't care how fast you make, I don't care how fast your disks are, I don't care if it's an SSD or flash, I don't care how much money you gave to a storage company, uh, you're, it's never going to be as fast as main memory. So using index compression is an awesome way to get around that. Uh, because when, what I want to show you here is that your indexes will be smaller both on disk and in memory. Right? You, you save space on disk. You don't need, you don't need as big disks because your data will be compressed on disk. And you don't need as much. Well, I mean, you probably need more memory anyway. But uh, you will make better use of the memory you have by compressing your indexes. Right? Just dun, 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 compress me. Get me in there, baby. Um, so let's talk about that. But first, my usual spiel. If you would like a, a, a low-cost membership, just to say thanks for, uh, for all the, the hard work and effort that I put into doing this stuff and, and to keep this channel uh, bless, blessedly commercial-free, uh, you can sign up for a low-cost membership. Uh, if you can't do that, if for some reason you have restrictions on your wallet, mom and dad won't give you their credit cards anymore. I, I know what that's like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can you can do you can support the channel in other ways. Uh, the likes, the comments, the subscribes—they all make me feel giant blissful moments in my day, uh, which is just, you know about as much as I can ask for. Blissful moments, <laughs> tiny little tastes of happiness. Little, little nibbles, little happy nibbles. Um, if you need SQL Server consulting, I'm available to do all sorts of stuff. Uh, this is what I usually do. If you need something else, let me know what it is. Well, you know, we, we can talk. Again, uh, everything has a price. If you need me to do something outside of SQL Server, um, again, everything has a price. <laughs> or, or, you know, <laughs> uh, in this economy, <laughs> everything has a price. Uh, if you'd like training on SQL Server, um, you know, 
I offer that at a very low cost as well. Uh, if you use the discount code spring cleaning or you click on the link that's down below in the show notes, you get 75% off everything. Brings it down to around about 150 US dollars. Now, I'm going to be honest with something, something you when it comes to SQL Server training is you, have to, you still have to put in the work. You can't just buy the training and not do anything with it. You got to go through it and you got to learn. You know, it's like, um, like the, two, the two activities that I've done in my life where, um, you know, you start doing them and you start looking at the people who are really good at doing them and you think, I need the stuff they have in order to be good. So like uh, when, I was, when I was younger and, um, you know, I, I, was, I, was allowed, I was allowed a drum set. <laughs> Uh, you know, you would look at like, you, you know, you would buy like Modern Drummer magazine and you would like look at what drumsticks someone's using. And like uh, at one point, that guy from Guns N' Roses had like the aluminum Easton drumsticks. And I was like, holy crap, aluminum drumsticks, I can't, ones I can't break. This is amazing. Uh, so like you start looking at and like what symbols they use and what drum heads they use and like what kind of pedals they have for stuff and you're like man if I don't like like what kind of drum set do you have is it a pearl or sonar or tom like what do you use and like you think if I don't have this stuff there's no way that I can be any good um, it's not true uh, the other the other thing was like you know getting into like gym stuff where you're like oh my god well, what what kind of you, you use liquid chalk what kind of belt do you have what kind of lifting shoes do you have what what, what protein are you drinking what where do you get your steroids from <laughs> I need those too. Like you start looking at, uh, you, I don't. I mean, personally, I've never taken steroids because um, I'm not. I'm not willing to. I, I, I don't need that much. I don't need that level of stuff in my life. Uh, that's that's a little too much even for me. Um, I'm, I'm I'm happy to happy to drink some un, un, unflavored protein powder though. Uh, but like you know, you you get all that stuff. You collect all that stuff. You still have to do the work for it to do anything for you. You still, you still have to practice your drums. You still have to go to the gym and lift heavier stuff every time. You, you, the, you have to put in some work. So if you're going to buy the training, please watch it. Please use it. Please do something with it. Because it's good training and it can make you better at your job. And then you can make more money. And then maybe someday you'll be making YouTube videos where, where you get to excoriate Microsoft and, and, and uh, people who do silly things with databases. Because it's fun. Let's face it. Like, like writing a query isn't that much fun. Tuning a query is kind of fun. Everything else is just dreary. Data is dreary. Data's dull. I should really change, maybe I should change the name of my company to something that involves a little more fun. I don't know what though. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe I should just start Beer Gut Magazine. That's, maybe that's, maybe that's better. That Barstool Sports guy seems like he's having a blast. Winning millions of dollars on sports bets and going around reviewing pizza shops in Massachusetts. <laughs> We're at Soggy's and Revere. <laughs> I don't know. He looks like he's having a nice time. Uh, anyway, uh, upcoming events. Uh, again, this image was generated by ChatGPT. If you're worried about AI taking your job, uh, just look at what happened. What, look what I got back when I asked for a neon sign that said live entertainment. Um, Friday, September 6th, I will be at Data Saturday Dallas doing a full day pre-con. Uh, and November 4th and 5th, I'll be at Pass Summit doing two full day pre-cons with the lovely and talented Kendra Little. Um, it should be a grand old time. But now, let's get on with the show and let's talk about data compression. Not data depression, but, you know, you wouldn't be far off if... if you, 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 I, I don't think I'd blame you if you, if you got a data depression. Let's be honest with you. I don't think that would be something that, I, that shocked me. So uh, let's um, create some index. So for the first thing that I want to show you is that, like, in general, I always opt for page compression because page compression gets you all the stuff that row compression does plus other stuff, right? There's all sorts of extra stuff that page compression can do that row compression does not. Um, I, I've, I've not run into too many scenarios where uh, row compression did way better than page compression. And, you know, like when I first started testing it or like looking at it, it was, it was a thing where like, okay, well, you know, maybe row compression makes more sense when there's a lot of unique data. Or maybe like page compression only makes sense when there's a lot of like duplicate data. I don't like, I don't know. It's like in my head, I'm thinking through like compression scenarios, like where would things make the most sense? So I'm gonna create uh, four indexes. Uh, they're, in, they're gonna be on two different columns in the, in the, in the post table. Uh, the first ones are going to be, one is going to use row 
and one is going to use page compression. And this is going to be on the owner user ID column, which is not terribly selective. There's a lot of different values in here. Um, you know, there's like 17 million rows in the post table and like, you know, there's 20, I think at the high end, there's about 28,000 rows in there for John Skeet. No one else has that many rows, but you know, there's just a lot of different numbers in there all over the place. The second set of indexes that I'm going to, I'm going to create are going to be on the ID column. I forget. Did I already do these? I already did these. So I, I forgot that I highlighted them all because I zoomed in on the first two. The second two are, are also just are going to uh, do row and then page compression, but this time on the ID column. And the ID column is, of course, the clustered primary key of the table. It is just magnificently unique. Mwah! All right, great. So let's look at those index sizes. Let's run this. And if you look at what we got here, we can ignore that top line that's the primary key. Uh, on the, the owner user ID row and page, well, the row index is about 190 megs, and the page compressed index is about 160 60 megs. So for the, you know, for the non-unique data, I think you know, row page compression wins pretty, pretty handily there, right? You know, like if this were a much larger table, the difference would be much bigger, of course. Like, but, you know, especially standard edition with me the memory caps that you have, even enterprise edition where getting like, you know, terabytes and terabytes of memory gets terribly expensive. Right, especially because your your knucklehead boss probably bought into the cloud, and now Microsoft charges you like add CPUs every time you want to add memory, and now you you for some reason have a 128 core server just to get like 500 gigs of memory, and like and that's expensive. That's not cheap. Um, uh, funny story. Uh, I I I, had, I set up an, an Azure VM. Uh, with my Stack Overflow stuff on it because I thought, uh, well, I was traveling a bit in July and I thought, well, maybe I'll, maybe I'll want to like write some demos. I'm not going to lug my 17-inch Lenovo laptop around with me while I'm like on vacation. So I just brought my little M3 Mac and I was like, you know, if I need it, I'll connect it into the cloud and whatever. And then like a, a couple of days ago, I got a bill for 500 bucks. Why? Because I had a disk. <laughs> I had a disk for a month. And I looked at, I went and I looked at the cost stuff in the Azure portal, and it was just this, this green gr graph that went up from like zero to about 500 bucks uh, over the course of uh, August. And I was like, wow, I'm already at 170 bucks. So I, I just canned the whole thing because I, I, I'm not paying 500 bucks a month for something I, I might use. Um, it, you know, coming back to what I said when I was talking about training and like, you know, you actually have to go to the gym to do stuff. That's not quite the same level of, of, of non-use pain that like most people get when they're like planet fitness, 10 bucks a month. And then they never go and planet, planet is just like, whatever, like no one, like hardly anyone notices 10 bucks a month going out the door. So you just have that useless membership. Um, so, uh, that would, but the, the Azure one, like 500 bucks a month for something that I just might use. No, thank you. No, thank you. So, and then let's go look at the <laughs> brief, brief, brief interlude there. Uh, if we look at the sizes of the uh, row and page compressed indexes for the ID column, the completely unique one, uh, that we, the, the row page compressed one is 143 megs and the page compressed one is 129 megs. So even for completely unique data, the page compression turns out better, right? So uh, that's all good stuff to know there. Now, <clears throat> um, Let's actually drop those indexes. Let's come up here and get rid of all those. We don't need all that crap floating around. Uh, what I want to do now is uh, create a couple indexes with no compression. Right? There is zero compression on either of these. Uh, one of them is on the owner user ID column, which is, of course, is an integer. The other one's on the last editor display name column, which is like an Invarcar 40. Because, yeah, display name's Invarcar 40 in the uh, users table, so it's, this is Invarcar 40 in the post table. So we've got these indexes, and what I'm going to do is drop everything out of memory. And uh, then I'm going to um, look at the size of those indexes. And if we look at the size of these, uh, the index on owner user ID is 233 megs, and the index on last editor display name is 170 megs. Now, you might be wondering why uh, uh, an index on an Invarcar 40 string column is so much smaller. Uh, there are a lot of nulls in there. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of nulls. Not everything gets edited in the post table. So for some reason, an integer column uh, ends up being much bigger than uh, a string column index, which is weird, right? Uh, so now let's run a couple queries. Let's just get a count and use those, uh, use those indexes specifically. And then we're going to look at what's currently in memory. Right? 
And we're going to run this. And this is, again, the, the, these helper views, what's up indexes and what's up memory, those are both available in my GitHub repo. Um, there's a link to that everywhere. So just if, you, if you're interested in them, use those. So looking at that, what happens when we use those indexes, when we scan those indexes, we end up with the entire index in memory. So like the entire size of the on disk uh, index ends up in memory, right? So the, right, right now we have both of those indexes fully in memory. Cool. We, we, can, we can now see that the size of an index on disk matches the size of the index in memory when not compressed. So let's recreate those indexes with compression. And uh, what I'm going to do is, well, I'm going to do basically what I did before. We're going to wait for those indexes to create any day now. You know, adding in the compression takes a little bit longer sometimes, but it's okay because what you get at the end is worth it. All right, let's drop some clean buffers here. And let's look at the size of those indexes. And of course, uh, these indexes are much smaller now. Uh, this one is just a bit smaller, uh, but the, uh, the index on um, uh, owner user ID is quite a bit smaller. It was like 230 before, right? So this one even got compressed pretty well. Now let's run our select count queries. Let's remember that these are now 157 and 129 megs. We're gonna run these count queries and we're gonna look at what's in memory and we will see that the size of the uh, mem the size of the compressed data in memory matches just about the size of the compressed data uh, on disk. So um, the, the important takeaway here is that uh, page compression is a great thing to use, uh, particularly if you're not using it at all and you're you are on an instance or type of SQL server uh, that's either limited by limited like by uh, addition of memory. So if you're on standard edition, you're limited to 128 gigs for the buffer pool. You can of course use memory beyond that for other stuff, but 128 gigs for the buffer pool. Or if you're on enterprise edition and you've just sort of maxed out how much hardware you can throw at something. It, introducing page compression to your indexes is a great way to um, make better use of the memory that you have. So uh, if you're not using it, you should start using it because you will see uh, improvements both in the size of the data on disk and the size of the data in memory. Of course, when the data ends up in memory, it has to get decompressed at some point, and that decompression is when you read it from memory. Right? So whenever you do the stuff from memory, that's when the decompression happens, and that's usually where the, oh no, CPU overhead! Um, it's not that bad. Uh, it's, re it's really not that bad. You, you, you should try it if you don't believe me. You should you try it. You'll like it. You know? I think, I think that's, that should be the motto. That's, that's the, 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 the family motto of, of index compression in SQL Server. Try it. You'll like it. <laughs> Mikey likes it. Anyway, um, that's, that's about good for this one. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Uh, I hope that you remember all of the good stuff that I said before about liking and subscribing and training and consulting because that's how Darling Data stays, stays afloat here. So uh, pay me money for the free stuff. No, I'm kidding. This stuff is free. I'm happy to give it away um, in, in hopes that you will find me so charming and likable that you will pay me to do other stuff for you. So it's, it's a trade, right? Fun. Anyway, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to upload this and, uh, and do, do something else for a minute. So thank you for watching.